In this video, I want to show you how to solve an inhomogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients uh, as an initial value problem using the Laplace transform technique. So uh, to start, we need to Laplace transform the entire differential equation. To do that, we make use of a table of Laplace transforms. Here's a table from my lecture notes. Uh, hopefully your professor will provide you a similar table. If we um, enlarge this table, you'll see that we need to Laplace transform the uh, derivatives uh, x dot and x double dot. Uh, with uh, x of 0 equals 0 and x dot of 0 equals 0. The initial conditions go in here. The Laplace transform of x dot then is just s times the Laplace transform of x. And the Laplace transform of x double dot is just s squared times the Laplace transform of x. And we also need to transform the right-hand side. The right-hand side is an exponential function, e to the at, and that will become the Laplace transform of e to the at is 1 over s minus a. Okay, so let's go. So the Laplace transform of this gives us s squared times capital X uh, plus 2s times capital X plus 5x capital X and the Laplace transform of e to the minus t, a here then is minus 1. So that becomes 1 over s minus a would be plus 1. Okay? So we've now uh, Laplace transformed the differential equation. That becomes an algebraic equation for capital X, and we can easily solve that. So we obtain that capital X, so this is a function of s variable, right? So that will become 1 over s plus 1 times s squared plus 2s plus 5. Okay. So the beauty of the Laplace transform technique is that we've gone from a differential equation to an algebraic equation after we take the Laplace transform. And then we're easily able to solve the algebraic equation. Okay, So we found a solution for x in the Laplace transform space, in the s space. Okay. The challenge now is that we need to transform back to get uh, x of t, transform back to t space. So to transform back, you need to use this table where we're transforming the right-hand side now back to the left-hand side. So that means we have to match uh, the right-hand side here that we can look it up on the table. Okay, If we have a quick look at this table, we have things like uh, exponential functions, polynomials, uh, trig functions, exponentials times uh, trig functions. So th these right-hand sides here have particular forms uh, that we have to, to uh, match. Um, we know that the solution of this equation should be uh, exponential functions from the particular solution and the solution of the homogeneous terms. Uh, the characteristic equation is actually s squared plus 2s plus 5 equals 0. This equation you cannot factor over the reals. This has complex conjugate roots. So we would expect exponential times sine, exponential times cosine. Okay, so there are two uh, steps that we need, two algebraic steps that you typically need to do now to be able to transform back. The first is to break up this denominator into um, 
linear pieces and possibly quadratic pieces if you have um, complex conjugate roots. To do that, you need the technique of partial fraction decomposition. So we want to write this denominator, breaking this up as some constant, divided by s plus 1, plus the second piece will be s squared plus 2s plus 5, because we cannot factor this one over the reals. And then the matching numerator here then will have to be linear in s, so bs plus c. So this first step is a partial fraction decomposition. Um, if we uh, do that, then we can put a um, uh, common uh, denominator, s plus 1, s squared plus 2, s plus 5, and obtain the numerators and then set the numerators equal to each other. So we will have something like uh, a times uh, s squared plus 2s plus 5. And then we'll have a bs plus c times uh, s plus 1. So that's the numerator here equals the numerator here equals 1. OK? Uh, so we should write the left-hand side as a polynomial now. And then we'll be able to equate coefficients of uh, s to various powers. So if we look at the s squared term, we'll have a, a s squared. And then we'll have a, b s squared here. So a plus b s squared. And if we look at the term proportional to s, we'll have a 2a times s here. And then the cross term here will be b plus c times s. So we'll have a 2a plus b plus c times s. And the constant term will be 5a and then c. So plus 5a plus c. That's the constant term. And that's supposed to be equal to 1. OK, so if we equate both sides of this equation, we're going to get the s squared term. There's no s squared term on the right. This will be 0. We have the 2a plus b plus c term. There's no s term on the right. That's equal to 0. And we have the 5a plus c is the constant, which is 1. OK? So that will give us three equations and three unknowns, a, b, and c. Okay. So we can go ahead and do the algebra to solve that. We can shortcut that if we go back to the original partial fraction decomposition. Um, there's a technique called the cover-up method, which allows us to easily find the coefficient in front on top of a linear term. What we do is we multiply both sides by s plus 1, and then set s equal to minus 1 to zero it out. So if we multiply this first term here by s plus 1, it will just become a. And if we multiply this second term here by s plus 1, and set s equal to minus 1, that will be equivalent to multiplying by 0, and this term will just vanish. So we can solve for a by multiplying by s plus 1 and setting s equal to minus 1. So if we look at the left-hand side, multiply by s plus 1, this term will go away. And then we set s equal to minus 1. So we'll get minus 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is minus 1. Plus 5 is 4. So we'll get a equal to 1 over 4. So immediately, without doing any algebra, we can find a equal to 1 over 4. Okay, so that's the beauty of the uh, cover-up method. And then armed with this value of a, b is easy then. So b is equal to minus 1 over 4. 
And if A is 1 over 4, then we get 5 quarters plus C equals 1. So C will have to be minus a quarter also. Okay. So now we know A, B, and C here. Okay. So um, A is 1 quarter. B and C are equal minus 1 quarter. So 1 quarter here minus 1 quarter here. So let's just factor out a quarter, and then this will be a minus sign here, and this will be an s plus 1, okay? So let's do that algebra. So we get uh, capital X of s. So I'll factor out 1 quarter, okay? And then we'll have a 1 over s plus 1. And then we'll have a minus b and c were minus 1 quarter, so we factor out a 1 quarter. So uh, we'll have a minus s minus 1, so that will become a minus s plus 1 over the denominator. So minus s plus 1 over s squared, and the denominator here is uh, s squared plus 2s plus 5. s squared plus 2s plus 5. OK? All right. So that was the first step, partial fraction decomposition. The um, second step, then, is this denominator here, if it's a quadratic, if we look at the table, if we have a quadratic denominator, then we need to put it in the form of a square, sum of squares, s minus a squared plus b squared, s minus a squared plus b squared. So the denominator, if it's quadratic, and it's going to transform to an exponential times a sine, or an exponential times a cosine, we need to put the denominator as the sum of squares. Uh, so to do that, we need the second technique that's called complete the square. We need to write this s squared plus 2s plus 5 as a sum of squares. We look at this s squared plus 2s, so we can write that as s plus 1 squared, that gives us an s squared plus 2s to match this s squared plus 2s, plus 1, but it should be plus 5, so we're missing 4. So to this I add 4, and 4 is supposed to be the square of something, and in fact it's 2 squared. Okay? So this is the complete the square step. So that means we have this x now is equal to 1 quarter. So we have our 1 over s plus 1. And then we have a minus s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. OK? Um, and that will be enough algebra, because if we look at the table, the 1 over s plus 1 we can transform here. So a is minus 1, so that gets transformed as e to the minus t. And the uh, s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared gives us and uh, provided we have an s plus 1 here, which we do, so this s plus 1 matches this s plus 1, tells us that a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 2. So we get a transform of e to the minus t cosine 2t. So transforming, we get our constant in front. This transforms to e to the minus t, because s equals minus 1, minus, this transforms to, uh, sorry, a equals minus 1. a equals minus 1 here also, so we also get an e to the minus t. 
and B is equal to 2. This one top matches this one, so this becomes um, the cosine, right? The cosine. So cosine 2t. So this is our transform, x of t. So I've done the transform from capital X of s to little x of t. Okay, so that's our solution. And if we want to write this in a nicer way, we can factor out the exponential. So we have 1 quarter e to the minus t, and then we have a 1 minus cosine 2t. And that uh, is our solution of the initial value problem.